we will close this lecture with a discussion on the importance of selecting the right learning parametrization. We have seen that artificial intelligence reduces to empirical risk minimization and that in ERM all we have to do is choose a learning parametrization. We will illustrate with some examples that this is not an easy choice. The parametrization controls generalization outside of the training set and it can make or break an AI system. When all is said and done, the parametrization is a model of how outputs are related to inputs and, as is always the case of models, they have to be an accurate representation of nature. Now, in reality, data is gathered from nature. To illustrate the effect of learning parametrizations in AI, however, we will generate our own fake data that follows models that we specify. One of them is a linear model in which inputs X are related to outputs Y according to a linear transformation, determined by a known matrix A of proper dimensions. We also add a white Gaussian noise term that is independent of the input X and has zero mean. The other is a nonlinear model where we post process this same linear transformation with a sine function. Given that we know the models, we can compute the statistical risk minimizer, as in our first attempt to build an AI. For instance, if we use the squared two norm laws to measure the pointwise mismatch between AI estimates and actual outputs, we end up with the SRM problem in which we average the pointwise loss over the data distribution. Using the given linear model and taking derivatives, it is ready to determine the optimal AI function, which is nothing else but the very same linear transformation that appears in the model. Now, this is a trivial example, but I am using it to illustrate the point that the AI mimics nature, literally in this case. The optimal SRM estimator is the model itself. But in this course, we are more interested in cases where the model is unknown. Thus, even though we know the models of our fake data, assume that we don't know them. Instead, we have access to Q data pairs XQ, YQ, which we lamp in a training set T. We hypothesize a linear parametrization phi of X equals H times X. This is not the model, by the way, which we denoted by A times X, just a hypothesis on how outputs are related to inputs, an assumption on what is a good function class for this machine learning problem. Using this function class, we end up with the ERM problem in which the pointwise loss is averaged over the training set, not over the distribution, which we are assuming, as would be the case in applications, then it is unknown. This is a problem we can solve with the stochastic gradient descent, the particular form of which we show here for reference, but this specific expression for SGD is not important for our forthcoming discussions. A more important observation is that the linear parametrization we have chosen can be used irrespectively of what the actual model is. It does not matter how inputs are related to outputs in the actual set we are free to hypothesize a linear relationship wherever we please. But of course, this linear parametrization will work well only when it matches the unknown model. This is the most important point we have to make about ERM, the importance of matching the parametrization to the unknown model. We will therefore elaborate with three examples. Begin by considering data generated with a linear model. We are using dimensionality 100 for inputs and outputs, and we operate with 1000 entries in the training set. Our ERM problem uses a linear learning parametrization. As shown on the plot on the left of your screen, the iterates of the SGD trajectory reduce the loss. We are therefore succeeding at solving the ERM problem and the loss to which we converge is small. Thus, we are learning an AI that approximates the model well within the training set. 
but we must recall that during the operation of the AI, we work outside of the training set. The plot on the right shows testing of the SGD trajectory on a different set. We see that the loss is also reduced, and it also converges to a small value. Thus, we not only succeed in solving the ERM problem and reducing the loss to a small value, we also succeed at learning to operate outside of the training set. Now, there is no mystery here. The model is linear, the parametrization is linear, thus the parametrization learns the model. As an example of a different nature, consider the sign model with the same dimensions and the same number of samples. We are still using ERM with a linear parametrization, same as before. And when we look at the SGD trajectory, we see that the loss is again reduced. We are succeeding at solving the ERM problem. This is just a property of SGD, by the way. I mean, SGD is working as we know it should. However, if we look at the value of the loss to which we are converging, we see that the loss is high. We are converging to an AI that, however optimal, is not that good. We are solving ERM, but we are not learning. When we look at operation outside the training set, the situation is just as bad. There is no reason to expect successful testing out of a failed training. Miracles just do not happen. And by the way, there is no mystery here either. The model is not linear. The parametrization is linear. Therefore, the parametrization does not learn the model. It just can't. There is a mismatch between the parametrization and the model. Our third example is perhaps the most interesting. We go back to the linear model, we retain the dimensions of the input and output data, but reduce the number of samples to Q equals 100. We are still learning with a linear parametrization, and we see that SGD reduces the loss because SGD succeeds at solving ERM. And since the model and the parametrization are match, the loss converges to a small value. We are learning to predict outputs within the training set. But when we operate outside of the training set during live operation, the loss is not reduced by much. We are failing to learn to operate outside the training set. In this case, there is a little bit of a mystery. The model is linear and the parametrization is linear. So how come we are not learning the model? The answer to this mystery is the complexity of the model relative to the amount of data that is available. We know that if we increase the amount of data in the training set, we will succeed in reducing the loss outside the training set. We saw this in our first example. But when we reduce the number of samples in the training set, we end up with insufficient data. There is not enough data in the training set to learn the model. The very important observation here is that there is never enough data. Thus, our models not only have to be much, they have to be sufficiently simple that they can learn with amounts of data that, however large, are always insufficient. The point for us to remember as we move forward is that machine learning is model free, but not really model free after all. It is true that ML does not require a model relating inputs X to outputs Y. This was the whole motivation for introducing ML. In the examples we consider here, we do not need to know the matrix A but we do need to know a class of functions to which the model belongs. At the very least, some rough hypothesis of which parametrizations are adequate for the problem of interest. In the examples here, we succeeded at learning when our hypothesis that the model is linear match the reality of the input-output model. We failed when model and parametrization were mismatched. 
but we not only need our parametrizations to match models, we need them to be of sufficiently limited complexity so that they can operate with insufficient data because data is always insufficient when the problem dimensions are large. This is where we leverage a structure using convolutional architectures such as CNNs and GNNs. We will start doing so in the next lecture.